What's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new Sweet Film Podcast. Today, with Han Solo coming out this week and Solo, a Star Wars story. Yeah, still a dumb title. We are bringing back talking Star Wars this week, and that that's the fun part. I mean, Star Wars is a huge part of a lot of people's lives, especially a lot of geeks and nerds and film people's lives. So it would be fun to be talking about maybe the highs and lows, the things that got us into Star Wars, our favorite Star Wars memories, just all those types of things. And bringing, of course, Cody... You're here joining me talking Star Wars. How are you doing today? I'm doing exceptionally well, Zach. I'm excited to talk some Star Wars. But before we begin that, guys, you should know, as always, with every episode of the Sweet Film Podcast that we do, that you'll be able to find this episode, along with all of our previous episodes, on SoundCloud and iTunes. And you guys should check out our previous episodes. We talked with Mr. Ryan O'Toole about the X-Men franchise. We talked with Mr. Durbin of Durbonia about the MCU. And, you know, it's just a lot of fun. So you should go check that out. And today, we got a very, very special guest. We're excited to have him because he's about as big of a Star Wars nerd as we are. So say hello to Mr. Adam Dolly. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate being on the show. And I have to sing one song real fast. Han Solo Cup. You fill me up. Let's have a part. Okay, that's a different thing. Anyway, now that I've embarrassed myself with <laughs> my singing voice, I'm excited to talk Star Wars because this is a childhood uh, film for me. And I absolutely adore this franchise. Let's get into it. Yeah, guys, let's talk about Star Wars. I mean, it, Star Wars is amazing. It's one of the best things that I think a lot of people get into. And and that's one of the most incredible things about Star Wars is that in some way, shape, or form, it has affected someone. Even if people aren't into Star Wars, it's somehow affected them in some way. And um, I, I think I want to pose this to you. And Adam, since you're a guest, this is where I want you to start. Where What was your first encounter with Star Wars? Was it a video game? Was it a book? Was it a movie? Was it a show? Like, what 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 made you on your journey to loving Star Wars? I uh, would okay okay so this is uh, when I was five years old my birthday I actually received the VHS uh, cassettes um, for my birthday and so the first day I watched a new hope I popped it in and got sucked into that world of Star Wars and I couldn't wait to pop in the next one then the following night to watch Empire and then return of the Jedi and then I just kept watching them over and over again and my very first action figure that I ever received was the Han Solo into stormtrooper uh, outfit with this removable helmet i got it out of a box of fruit loops when i was a kid i you know uh remember that very thing uh, remember that a lot and then i used to collect all the toys and then reenact the movies as they were happening on screen with the characters i actually owned and remember just watching countless number of times and just fell in love with that trilogy and then i would went i went to um in 97 1997 the uh they got re-released into theaters for the, the special editions with all the new little added features here and there. And I remember every single time they came out in theaters, I would go with my dad and I would know the, the crap out of him because I would lean over <laughs> like, dad, that's new. Dad, that's new right there. That's brand new. He's like, shut up. <laughs> Just watch the movie, Adam. I know you know your stuff. You're a nerd. I get it. Uh, but no, it was so awesome to actually see those movies on the big screen, regardless if I cared for the special editions later on. But still watching them on the big screen was fantastic and just something that's always going to be stick with me. And of course, when 2001 hit, when uh, Tana Menace came out, absolutely I needed to see that film. And that was one of my favorite ones growing up until I rewatched the, uh, the older ones uh, again. And then now I'm here knowing that. Phantom Menace wasn't as good as I remember it being, but it's still. <laughs> I think we all still, were at that point in time. I, I mean, still, yeah, still going to the theater and you know watching it was an experience that there's there's so much fun to watch. And I remember staying up when they were going to drop the trailer for Phantom Menace. Um, it was on Entertainment Tonight when they dropped it, and I remember staying up and um, wa waiting for that trailer to pop. And I just this was like, oh my god, I just had this big nerdy uh, excitement level all the way up to a million. And then I even like I collected everything I could, even the soda cans, like 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 the Dr Pepper Pepsi containers with the, like the Star Wars characters oh on them. God. I actually had those for the longest times with soda still in them. Like I even I moved with them and everything. Like I had them for like years until I realized they were leaking soda on my bed because they were right above my bed. So yeah, I, I kind of like Star Wars a little bit. So 
You yeah. could say a little bit. That might be a little <laughs> underestimated, but I mean, yeah. that's the thing about Star Wars. And going back to the prequels, we'll get into that. I think there's a a lens over everyone's face, especially depending on what age you watched it on. Now, what about you, Cody? Like, what what brought you into the Star Wars universe? Was it the same thing? Did you start with the original trilogy, or did you start with the prequels? Yeah, when it comes to how I was brought up with Star Wars, um, you know, there are Trekkies. There are Star Wars fans. My parents were both. I, I was brought up in a household where Star Wars and Star Trek, there weren't these gigantic wars. They were respected in both of their genres and both of where they came from. And yeah, we started out with the original trilogy. I remember it was kind of like Adam's experience, except mine happened on Christmas. One Christmas morning when I was about four or five years old, my mom was like, oh, hey, look under this tree. And we did the thing, you know, you open one present before Christmas morning. And she's like, yeah, you should open that one. And I did. It was an entire VHS set of the original trilogy. And we sat down and that afternoon into evening, we watched all three of the original trilogy of Star Wars films. And it was great. And I got to say, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed to say that the original trilogy especially when it comes to a new hope up until i was about 10 i probably watched that particular film on and off every single week probably two or three times and i i'm not exactly sure what the math is there but you can tell it's it's quite a lot and if you couldn't already tell i've got a lightsaber i've got the star wars films behind me i got a couple of figurines on the shelf as well I'm a giant Star Wars fan, and yeah, yeah, I, I liked the prequels when I was younger, but I'm sure we're going to get into that, but Star Wars has been a major part of my life. I On the YouTube space, I had a, a Star Wars news show for a little while, and, and behind where, where the camera is set right now, there's actually a giant Star Wars mural, so yeah, you could say I'm, I'm a little bit of a fan. What about yeah. you, Zach? Uh, I mean, Star Wars for me. So I don't know exactly what age I got like into Star Wars. So I just remember I, I somehow went, I think my dad took me and saw Attack of the Clones. And um, this was the first one I ever saw. <laughs> and as a kid, I mean, like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Like, Je I, I was just as, like a little kid. I'm like, holy shit, Jedi's on screen, like fighting ball. You know what I mean? Like that, that was the film that that was the first time we ever saw, like the Jedi Order actually all together fighting. Um, then my dad was like, you know, there's better films than that, right? I'm like, really? He goes ahead and shows me the original trilogy. We watched it in a whole afternoon. Absolutely loved it. Empire has still been my favorite ever since. And I remember when I went back and watched Phantom Menace a couple years later because I was always obsessed with Darth Maul, but I don't, I just never saw the film. I just loved the character, had all the action figures of him, just never saw it. Really enjoyed Phantom Menace. You know, this is me as a kid. And then I remember I my dad took me out of school. I was bugging him. I'm like, I want to see Revenge of the Sith. I want to see Revenge of the Sith. I want to see Revenge of the Sith. My dad took me out of school. He's like, shut up. I'm going to nap in the theater and you can watch your damn movie. And I remember just, we were the only ones in that theater, which was like shocking because it's a Star Wars film. We were the only ones in the theater, but given like where I was living at, it was kind of like the middle of nowhere. And we watched it. He fell asleep and I loved it. And then I grew <laughs> up and, you know, as a kid, I would always watch the cartoon shows. I don't know if you guys remember the 2D animated Star Wars, the Clone Wars show that was on Cartoon Network. That was totally 2D animated. And uh, I love that thing that that the, if you can ever find it, anyone who watches or listens to this podcast, if you guys can ever find a disc for that, I think they're like I the last time I checked, they were like 30 bucks on Amazon. They might have gone up. But it is such a well done show. I don't. I don't think it's canon, but it's very well done. I think it's even better than the other Clone Wars show. I never really got into that one. Um, but Star Wars has always been a thing for me. It's always been something that inspired me in a lot of ways for filmmaking and just the universe in general is beautiful. I've read the, a ton of the Legends books, the comic books. I have toys behind me. I used to have every figure from the Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, anything with General Grievous I'm obsessed with. I, I love the character of Grievous and Star Wars has always been there for me in a sense. You know, mm. it's been an escape and I think that's something that it goes for a lot of us. And that's where I go to say is I think we brought this up and I think we should start not from the original trilogy, but counting one, two and three, which is the prequels. Wow. This is going to be an interesting conversation. Oh, this um, is going to be fun. <sighs> So yeah, the prequels come out. Um, I know everyone who went to go see the prequels. I mean, you go look at old photos back in 1999 and old videos of people waiting outside, freaking out. Oh my God, it's happening. 
and it turns out it's not what everyone wanted it to be. Most people came out with lenses though, and so I'm curious. At what age did you guys notice that you guys didn't like this film? Um, I think I was. Well, if we're gonna talk about if we're gonna talk about let's see here, the Phantom Menace, I think it was probably maybe like thirteen or fourteen. Oh, like yeah. I, up until that point, I was like, you know, the movie it's enjoyable, it's fun. I I, I thought it was cool, you know, all the special effects. Then you get older and you're like, yeah, why th these people? They're acting very strangely, and why <laughs> is it? Why is this dialogue? Why does it make my ears want to bleed? I, oh, I mean, oh, it's one of the that. things. One of the things I will say is that when it comes to it, Ewan McGregor, out of any of the prequel films, he was always my favorite actor in them because yep. honestly, perform performances all around aren't really that good. But Ewan McGregor, he was by far my favorite. What about you, yeah. Adam? When did you start noticing that Phantom Menace isn't uh, yeah. that uh, good? <laughs> well, I mean, I, mean uh, I messed up on the date. I said 2001 when it came out. I was like, yeah, you're right, 99. So my bad on the dates. So anyway, uh, for me, what I caught, um, for me, the Phantom Menace started becoming bad when uh, Attack of the Clones came out. Because uh, I I actually thought that one was even better growing up. We'll talk about that in a second as well. <laughs> oh so my I think god! They, oh, I really geez. liked Attack of the Clones when it first came out. But again, it's also the the the, the goggles too. I I knew they weren't as good as the original ones. Uh, but for Phantom Menace, like I think my goggles came off around roughly around the same time. No wait, because it came out in '99, so I've been 10 years old, maybe about 11 or 12. You know, like I said, like roughly around the same time Attack of the Clones came out uh, because then you, you start watching them, quite, the other films, and you watch this Phantom Menace quite frequently. And I would always fall asleep right before the pod racer scene. So I knew <laughs> none of the other movies made me fall asleep in it. But there's but, something wrong with it. So there's yeah. something wrong with it. So uh, the, right, I always would like if I wanted to fall asleep at night, I always put the Phantom Menace in and fall asleep like right before the pod racer sequence. And I would. I would be so happy with myself if I can make it through the pod racer uh, scene. So uh, for me, yeah, about like that, that age. And I, I still, I can watch Phantom Menace and enjoy parts of it. Like obviously the Darth oh, Maul. Yeah. That, Absolutely. I mean, there's good things to the prequels. Like there are good qualities to it. They're not, are they trash? Yeah. But is it sometimes good trash? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I actually have a coworker who, no lie, thinks the Phantom Menace is the best Star Wars film ever. He, <laughs> I'm wow! Still, and he's he's my age. He's like in uh, close to his thirties, and it's like he literally think like he Qui Gon Jinn's his favorite character. That he lives by that mantra. Like like literally like he that's 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 crazy his favorite film. Wow. So that's it's just, hard to it's imagine. Just, it just shows you that uh. Movies speak different uh, volumes to different people. So hey, you know what they do, and I mean, there's people that I know that are just like that. I went to school, and they're like the prequels are the best in the trilogy. I'm like, how? And it, like, there's <sighs> this one girl. I I probably argue with every time I see her. She brings it up because she knows it pisses me off. She goes, "Revenge of the Sith is the best Star Wars film," and I literally <laughs> yell at her, "What the fuck are you talking about, Miss?" <laughs> <laughs> even close to how good. Like it is to like Empire Return or New Hope or even the newer trilogy. In fact, like and, and this is like where I get into is that people bash this new trilogy. Like there's this group of Star Wars fans that just bash the new films. And it's like for me, it's like, did you not remember the prequels? Like the prequels weren't the difference between the prequels and the new trilogy. I can totally get if someone like doesn't like like what they're doing with the new trilogy. But the thing is, is with the prequels, it affects the original trilogy in other ways. Because it changes some of the lore. It, it changes some of the characters that you think of. And just the... Oh my god. The dialogue. The dialogue. <laughs> it, I don't it, like it, sand. It's rough and it's coarse and it gets everywhere. Now that's, that's George Lucas for you. Because that's George <laughs> Lucas. Uh, 
uh, his dialogue, like his only like really good dialogue driven movie other than like the original ones is American Graffiti. Yep. If you, you go yeah. back and watch some of the other movies, that's a George Lucas thing. If you watch, cause he, he wrote or he helped with Indiana Jones, King of the Crystal Skull. And then that, you know, all those, those issues is there yeah. too. And he has his fingerprints are that and that you could tell that he has these great ideas, but when it, and he can build a world. I think the, uh, what the prequels did really well, they built a world mm -hmm. where it feels lived in and everything. It feels like there's this uh, a form of, you know, day by day living in these worlds like Tatooine, Coruscant, Naboo and everything. You can see what, what he's trying to do. But when he gets to the the verbiage of people coming out of people's it's just like uh it's just a verbal vomit, you know? It's just like he just they just he's yeah. just vomiting on screen like these these dialogue, these words yeah. that don't hold any weight. Like there's stuff that I can guarantee you, I can follow out around Hayden Christensen all day, and he will never say anything about sand like that, like <laughs> stuff like that. We'll he's a decent actor. If you've seen him in other things. Yeah. He's a decent actor. Like I think these films give him like horrible credibility because I mean, this is it doesn't no justice to any of the actors in there. Really, Obi Wan. I mean, even McGregor does his best with the dialogue in here, and it's still it's sort not of enough. terrible. No, it's not. I mean, the di and you put it perfectly adam the worlds feel lived in it's great seeing these worlds it's great seeing all these different planets because that's something the original trilogy did not give us is this sense of everything the prequels is obviously before a darker time but you get to see planets you get to see different um beautiful landscapes and whatnot and for me again like you're saying it, it's great to see all these different aliens even though the cgi does not hold up not at all but it's still great to see it's great to see all these different characters and the dynamics i mean the prequels have some fantastic cool characters grievous i'm a fan of i i don't know why i just love how he looks count dooku is a cool character um darth maul i mean come on like darth maul he's been resurrected through the cartoons multiple times because he's a great <laughs> character and I, I i think that's where it goes is that another thing you want to look at is the films that george lucas has had the least of his hands on are the best films <laughs> absolutely i mean you look at empire strikes back i mean george lucas was the tiniest bit involved with that but the person who directed that film was irving Kirshner. And everybody still professes, or most people do, that it is the best Star Wars film to date. And George Lucas, he didn't really have hands-on with that one. Oh, yeah. No, 100% agreed. Um, and that's where I go. I, I think um, with our rankings, I'm curious, Adam, how would you, like, just off the top of your head, how would you rank it, that your films, like, worst the best? Worst the best? Well, not counting the TV movies. Um, yeah, no. no we're <laughs> yeah, not counting no. that. That's the um, one. <clears throat> no, I would go uh, Attack of the Clones, Phantom Menace. I, I, my, your, my ranking is going to be different than your guys. Is you guys going to uh, make fun of me in a second? So it goes, <laughs> it goes Attack of the Clones at the bottom, Phantom Menace, Rogue One, The Last Jedi, Force Awakens, Revenge of the Sith, Return of the Jedi, A New Hope, and then Empire Strikes Back. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Though Revenge of the Sith and Force Awakens could flip flop, it just all depends okay. on the day. Yeah. All right, what about you, Cody? Let's hear your ranking. Oh, geez, we're about to open up a whole can of worms here. So, all from... right, everyone, brace yourselves. Um, oh, comment section. <clears throat> oh, geez. Okay, you know what? Here we go. I'm just finishing up our uh, AC for Attack of the Clones and Phantom. Okay, so I got it written down right here on this nice little clipboard. My ranking is from worst to best. Phantom Menace, uh, not Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, then Phantom Menace, then Revenge of the Sith, then Rogue One, then Return of the Jedi, and then The Force Awakens, then A New Hope, then The Last Jedi, and then Empire Strikes Back. That's some ballsy stuff right there. And I guess I should get my ranking out. And now I'm going to leave. Now I have seen Han Solo, so I'm going to leave that actually out till the film's out. I'm not going to say where it places. Um, I'll give it a hint a little bit towards the bottom. But um, so where's the best um, number? Uh, so number nine would be the Phantom Menace. Uh, eight is Attack of the Clones. I actually like it a little bit, preferably over it, because Phantom Menace, the only thing I like oh. is Darth Maul. <clears throat> Rogue One. 
Revenge of the Sith, Last Jedi, A New Hope, Force Awakens, Return of the Jedi, and Empire is my favorite. So I think we're okay. all in agreement that um, Empire is one of the best films. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not just one of the best Star Wars films. It's just one of the best films. Period. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So I'm so let's talk about this. Going back to the OG trilogy, we all have great memories of watching it for the first time. And I, Empire, it's something special. It's something special. It's, it, it did something different at, at the time that I remember my dad telling me people did not like the film when it first came out. And I'm curious. Um, so, Adam, like, how how were you with the o- original trilogy? Like, was it always like these films like always stuck out to you? Were you always constantly rewatching them? Like, which one was like your favorite? Some favorite moments? Just just vent about how much you love like the o- original trilogy. All right, uh, uh, it's easy. It's easy. Return of the Jedi was the best one. It was the most rewatchable. Yes, it is. I'll agree that with was that. my favorite one. I didn't mind the Ewoks, didn't mind any of that. And then I absolutely hated, I did not like The Empire Strikes Back. I, growing up, what? that was my least favorite. Wow. That was you know my least favorite. You're the first person to tell me that, though. I've heard that multiple times from people. Because the the reason why I did not like about it is um, the, the Hoth. I did not like the snow. Like I called it the snow planet. And the whole at at walkers, I thought that was boring. And then I was like, this is way too dark. It wasn't as fun. Like, I still enjoyed it. Uh, but then... Um, when I was in high school, I actually took a trip down to Mexico, like, like a little uh, mission trip down there and did like a sports camp and everything. And then I came back and I got this, um, this virus, like this virus can like, um, drinks. I got some water in my mouth or whatever. So I got like some little sickness. I was out for a, a week. I just, all I could do was lay in my bed and watch movies. So that I, what I do, I will rewatch the trilogy, but then I watched like every single special feature on the DVDs that I had. And as I was watching the empire strikes back one, I realized this is not just a good Star Wars movie. This is like one of the best movies I've all like ever made. And I think I was like a fifth. I was like sixteen or something like that at that time. And uh, I just dug deep into those special features. And then after I rewatched the movie, watched all the special features, I rewatched the movie again. And it just like, yeah, this is by far the best one. I don't know why I didn't like it before. It tells it's so much. A detail and depth into these characters it expands everything that the first one did correctly but made it better it tells a, tells a more compelling story and it tells a story at that time of movies that i actually really like i'm a huge fan of uh cop and gangster films like mm-hmm. the part it's my favorite one of my favorite movies of all time that, will, that hasn't changed since 2006 uh, um whenever it came out and then so the, like this one has that darkness like those films do have so i I loved it, and I, it still is by far one of the best ones for me, anyway. And uh, yeah, no, yeah, and the Return of the Jedi. Oh, yeah, sorry, Return of the Jedi for me has kind of lost some of it because I could see a little bit hits hit things here and there that it's weaker. A New Hope is just a really good like origin story and yep. uh, opening of a a franchise. So definitely, that one hasn't really changed in my opinion because that was always my second favorite. So that it's kind of been like staying there. So, yeah, no, I mean, I agree with you. Return of the Jedi, when I was younger, that was the one I always rewatched. And um, now for me, actually, one of the most rewatchable ones for me is Force Awakens. Uh, Each and every time I rewatch this film, I like it more and more. Um, And maybe it goes to the audience experience I had because I put down that the three best audience experiences I've ever had watching a film opening night Force Awakens. Uh, now Avengers the Infinity War and surprisingly the third one would be um, Toy Story 3 the <laughs> three best experiences I've ever had but I just remember Force Awakens you could hear people crying as the opening credits were going like it was crazy but for some reason every time I watch the film I like it more and more it's so rewatchable it's so enjoyable it's so fun and it's just a great way to get us back into the franchise just like how you said A New Hope is a great thing to start off this whole franchise i love i love those all those aspects now growing up for me um it was probably the same way like after i'd kind of gone out okay the prequels are bad because i used to always rewatch them i remember when i got revenge of the sith i was like dang this is really cool um <laughs> but growing up you know once i got into it return of the jedi was one of the ones that i constantly rewatched that throne room battle of of all the ewoks wicket is underrated wicket is a true legendary hero in the Star Wars franchise. You watch them um, useless. No, they're not. They're beautiful. Yeah, um, they if are. If you've never seen the Ewoks, Ewoks film, 
have you guys seen the Ewok film? Yes, yeah. and it's so dumb. No, it's great. It's better than The Last Jedi. Um, and you I'm shut <laughs> your mouth. People will agree with me. If you think the Ewok movie is better than The Last Jedi, Caravan of Courage. There you, go. there you go well, so um, the, i don't think that's really a value valid argument here because um, half of the population says the last jedi is crap anyways i and that proves a point <laughs> <laughs> but and we'll get into that in a second we'll we'll debate the last jedi in a little bit because i'm sure that's what people want to hear is our thoughts on the last jedi obviously cody kind of already shot himself in the foot at placing it number two but that is okay because film is subjective now, A New Hope, to be honest, kind of boring. But when you put it against some other films, but that's fine. Again, build you into this universe. Um, Cody, what what about you? Do you, do you were you always a fan of Empire Strikes Back, or were you kind of always on the camp of Return? No, I always loved Empire Strikes Back. Except, you know, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings for me because the way my parents raised me with the Star Wars films, I never exactly viewed them as their own individual films. I had always viewed Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi as just one entire entity. So it was like film to film to film. I thought it was all just one movie up until I realized, wow, there can actually be franchises with stuff. But so I can't say I really that I really had a certain point to where I liked Empire Strikes Back better than the others than when I started getting older. And I started really appreciating the Empire Strikes Back around the same time that I started seeing the prequels as not all that great. It was around 13, 14 years old, and I started looking into it. You know, it's got the more mature themes. It started getting darker. It raises the stakes for all of our characters. It builds the relationship with all of our characters, and we get introduced to new and fabulous characters, and it just makes you love the entire Star Wars saga even more. But of course, you know, now we've gotten to a point where... <sighs> Nobody hates Star Wars as much as Star Wars fans, I think is what the phrase is. And that is it's, the perfect uh, thing to say. Unfortunately, that's where we are right now. You know, and, for Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. You know, Force Awakens comes out. Everybody loves it. It's a return to Star Wars. And it was the biggest opening box office up until Avengers Infinity War. And now. Now we had The Last Jedi, which I think is what we're going to talk about next. Yep. And we saw, um, you know, even though people weren't big fans of Rogue One, the, most people said it was just okay. But now we got Last Jedi and Star Wars family, the Star Wars community, people in general have just been completely split down the middle. And you know what? A very toxic film. You know, first of all, the number one thing is whoever that whoever that complete tool belt was that worked for Variety, who spoiled all the major moments before most of the population could go see it, screw you, sir, and I hope you don't get to work again. Because what you did is just unconscionable, okay? You shouldn't have done that. But the oh, last if, we're, if we're calling out people, fuck you to the person who ruined Force Awakens for me. When I was watching a fucking cooking video, I looked in the comments and someone says, Kylo Ren is Han Solo's son and he kills Han Solo. Literally a week before. What the fuck? Sorry. <laughs> All right, Adam. Adam, is there any big uh, spoiler type stuff or, or things you want to say when it comes to I Star Wars? Or, uh, Deadpool the guy who spoiled freaking Infinity War for me in my comment section. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, I saw no. someone spoil Deadpool 2 for you in your comment section. Yeah, this is stupid. Yeah. Deadpool 2 <laughs> as well. They spoiled the freaking uh, cameos. Like, uh, anyway. But yeah, no, no, Star Wars. Star Wars, no, the uh, Star Wars thing, I got a little picture of Han Solo. Like, like uh, as I'm walking into it, I got, I was like, okay, I'm going to like walk, I'm like, I'm going to tag myself in this theater. Say like, I'm walking to see Star Wars. And then of course, boop, freaking Han Solo with a lightsaber. Damn, see, uh, dude, cool. There was actually someone in Arizona put on the back of their car. Han Solo dies in episode seven. Like as a giant oh. sticker. <laughs> Like, that's just rude. That's just rude. I remember my dad saw that, and he was like, well, no, I don't want to see the film. But, so, sequel trilogy. 
Um, we all appreciate the Force Awakens in some way, shape, or form. Adam, you like the Force Awakens, right? Yeah, it's really, it's really good. It's fun. Like, yeah, it, it takes the best parts of the original, like the the OG trilogy, but makes it very fun. I like, I love the character. Tell, look at this. This is one of my favorite characters that absolutely gets shit on in the movies. Captain Phasma is the Have one you, of the, my you favorite characters. Read, uh, Captain Phasma's book, really recommend it. It yeah. opens up a whole new limelight that actually adds more depth to her scenes in The Last Jedi. Sorry, her scene okay. in The Last Jedi. <laughs> okay, if we're going to talk about books to recommend, if they're... Okay, if you guys... I know there are people who complained about Princess Leia's involvement in The Last Jedi and in The Force Awakens. If you guys want a really, really, really good book... That's not just a great Star Wars book. It is a great book. I believe the book is called Bloodlines. Yep, that's it. Bloodline. Yeah. Yeah. And it it just gives so much depth, so much information, not only as Princess Leia as a character, but with the people she interacts with. Because the book is essentially about people finding out that her father was Darth Vader while she is working in the Senate. It's not just a great Star Wars book. It is a great book all around. And if you're a Star Wars fan and you haven't read it, you need to pick it up. No, well, I, fine, then I'll recommend a book now too, then. I'll recommend a book. <laughs> it's it's, one, of the great, it's the, one of the greatest Star Wars characters of all time. We don't have enough redhead guys in Star Wars, and we need to talk about Dash Rendar from Shadow City. I Empire. knew I knew you were going that, there. That's the best. <laughs> I was waiting for you to bring him up. Star I was waiting. Wars. Dash Rendar is by far my favorite Star Wars character, and he should be canon because we see the Outrider in Moss Eisley Spaceport during A New Hope in the special editions. One of the best contributions George Lucas has ever made to Star Wars is putting the Outrider in the Moss Eisley Spaceport. Thank mm. you, George. Write, learn how to write uh, better scripts. But anyway, let's go back. <laughs> I, I'll okay, go and you say, know what? I won't one day they actually do bring Dash Rendar in in a certain capacity, either as a side character or something. I and I'll petition that Adam, you should play him. Oh no, no, Disney's yes. already approached me. Disney's oh, approached okay. me. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Is that is that are you getting paid to do Han Solo review? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting paid to give it a positive. Yeah, exactly. Right. Get called a deal, I'm sorry. Okay, you know what? You know what? If we're gonna talk about characters that were in Legends, but now you know they're in canon. Okay, if there's one character that I want to petition to be in a Star Wars film that is officially canon again, but needs to be the villain of a Star Wars film, it's going to be Grand Admiral Thrawn. You know, he was back in Legends with Shadow of the Empire, and now we got him in Star Wars Rebels, and we got the Thrawn book. If you guys don't know who Grand Admiral Thrawn is, and, and you want to know about a really great villain with a really great thought process, the book Thrawn by Timothy Zahn is a really, really great deep dive into a very villainous character's mindset. And honestly... I want to see Grand Admiral Thrawn be a villain inside of an actual Star Wars film, not just in a TV show, not in it, just in an anima animation. Grand Admiral Thrawn is a great villain, and he needs to get into a Star Wars film. Yep, no, I agree. I love Thrawn. Thrawn was great. He's one of the big parts of Rebels. Now, okay, if we're talking legends, okay, I'm going to say Darth Revan. It will never happen because he literally looks just like Kylo Ren. But um, <laughs> Revan's storyline is like one of my favorite things. I just love the character in general. And I know like we've gotten hints of him, but I, I want more of that. And then Plagueis. I want to see Plagueis on the big screen. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I want to. I think Plagueis is a really interesting character, but I'm with you. Um adam on dash rendar he, he's just a cool character i i really want dash rendar in a okay in a star wars film this is the biggest argument you can this is the biggest like why hasn't this been already made what other books have got are so popular that had a, a video game based off of it that have action figures based off of it that has had a full soundtrack based off this book and nothing has ever come of it what other books can you say that None. Not, none. None. Seems like, like uh, that soundtrack is actually pretty dang good too. And oh, Prince yeah. Azor, the leader of the Black Sun. You get, you can add, you can add, you know, franchise or characters from the OG trilogy like Darth Vader, Palpatine. I, w I would skip off and change up Leia a little bit, but uh, you can, you can mention Han. You can bring in Boba Fett. All these classic characters, like Skywalker. Yeah. At least it, it I can sprinkled in. Yeah, it's and it's perfect. 
And one more other character I do want to mention that I think was such a cool, cool um, character was Starkiller from the um, Force Unleashed games. I, I just think he's, like he's a badass. Like that that like if you if you want a whole like rated R Star Wars film on Netflix, it's gonna just go through and hack and slash people. That that'd be pretty cool. But going back to the sequel trilogy, because we got way off course on this whole thing. Yeah, people are probably thinking we're dodging the big question here. <laughs> that, hey, that's fine. So let's talk about the Last Jedi. Um, oh, I think that's boy. where we should get to now um adam i want to start with you you're a guest um give us your initial thoughts and where you are at now with the last jedi all right so every year that these star wars movies have started coming out in december time mike the company that i work for uh a purple delivering company uh fedex <laughs> anyway uh, so a bunch of us like 30 of us would go to the theater and watch these films and we saw force awakens we saw rogue one all a lot of fun the last jedi came out Everybody's super hyped, and everybody in the theater that came with our group absolutely loved it, other than three people. And I'm one of their, I'm absolutely going doing this in the theater, like, <sighs> I'm huffing and puffing. And I'm sitting next to one of um, my good friends who brought their daughter, who's like 13, uh, to the theater. And I'm sitting right next to her, and I'm just like huffing and puffing. And my wife's like, you're way too loud. Like I was like, but I was literally just like uh, so frustrated. And another one of my good friends who actually is on the almost sideways.com website with me, he does a bunch of other movie related stuff as well. He came down to the theater. I was like, so how do you like it? He's like, dude, I loved it. I think it's one of the best things since empire strikes back. Like I absolutely love it. I was like, yeah, I kind of hated it. <laughs> like, I, like I hated it. Like, uh, it's just, it's like, it's, it is something that was completely different than um, a way of telling the story than I thought they were going to go. Yeah, I definitely felt like it, it was definitely a curveball compared to everything. Like I thought the thing I was going to hate the most was the porgs, and I actually enjoyed the porgs the porgs the most <laughs> out of the movie. My first viewing, and um, they're cute. Yeah, like I. The movie took some it had some balls for sure like where i'm at now because i rewatched watched it the next day before i even did my review because i was like i can't do this like i can't even do my review for it like without just the one viewing so i went back the next day after work and saw it and i said okay well i'm just going to enjoy this movie for what the for what it is and enjoy the ride that it takes me on and i don't have to agree with some of the stuff that happens in it and I still don't. I still don't agree with. Are we able to talk spoilers on this movie? You think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. been out. It's on Blu-ray. So. Okay, cool. Spoiler. The, my big thing was my my first thing. I knew I wasn't. I knew the movie that this. I the first thing I didn't like about the movie, and I knew that I was like, oh no, this is gonna be pretty bad shape. Was the whole Poe Dameron joke at the very fr the beginning? It's like, oh, sorry, I can't hear you. Are you there? And then Hux is like made to look like this fool. They did that gag. It's like you're clearly talking to them. And then like they, you say they can't, that, that gag, the very beginning, I was like, this is not, uh, it, this is not going to be a good, if they keep doing this, this humor. And then they did the, the whole balls. You think, Oh, that's, that explains princess Leia. They're going to kill her off here. They did some rewrites and some reshoots here. I was shocked oh, when that happened. The first, I was like, Oh it. wow. That's some balls right there. I was like, I actually dug that. I was like, that, that's cool. That's cool. It got me back in the movie. And then all of a sudden in her hand, I was like, son of a, like, I get that's a force power in the books and, can and canon and stuff, but it's never explained in the film or even in Force Awakens that she has any, you know, actual force abilities other than, other than a connection with her brother and she can feel things in the force, but she never actually shows her experimenting with moving or anything like that and having her being going back to the force. That seems completely backwards to me i don't i don't understand didn't like that mm -hmm. and then also um uh some of the stuff with luke obviously uh i under i understand it but i don't like it um no. I, I put it this way the last jedi is the film that no one expected no one wanted or I wouldn't say wanted, but no one thought they wanted. Because some people did love what they did with Luke. I really actually appreciate what they did with Luke. Um, but again, this is a film that no one expected. Everyone went in with so many different theories. And Ryan Johnson literally turned it around, pushed it out the window. And... Or chucked a lightsaber over his shoulder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. When I first saw that, I was that actually pissed me off. 
I was yeah. not happy in the theater. I still don't like that moment. I, I, I still don't. I, I don't know why. Like, there's certain things about this film that are frustrating because they built up so much from The Force Awakens for it to be nothing. And uh, given, I actually did watch The Last Jedi with his director's commentary. And if you haven't yet, that it that helps the film so much. Understanding why he did, because it's pretty much him explaining why he chose certain things. <laughs> And it opens up different corner pockets to be like, okay, I, I actually get that. But still, there's certain things about that film that don't make sense. Uh, the Leia thing, no, I, I'm with you on that camp. I, I don't like it. And oh, can't continue, bite, Adam. You, you can't, oh, God. Can't so one of the biggest I, I think Cody, Cody, one of the I don't biggest think Cody likes can't bite either. No, yeah. no, I do not. The, the whole can't bite thing is, this is another big thing to me, too. When I was watching the movie, this I caught this the very first time. So when they're thinking about we need to go find somebody to uh, smuggle or hack something into the ship and reprogram some stuff, why does Poe Dameron, who has no – like, how how did Poe Dameron know to call Maz Kanata? He's never actually met her. Yes! Yes! What the fuck? I'm with you on that. <laughs> How, he never like if how did how did they uh how did why would he call her and not uh why Finn was the only one that we saw actually met her and honestly I'm really disappointed with Maz Katana's character I thought she was so cool for Spikins yeah as this little fucking hologram I Cody you want to defend this a little any parts of these things that feel free to jump in and defend what you think is wrong. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I was just letting you guys get your frustration okay. out. And oh, don't worry. I got some out. more on that. Uh, the, 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 okay. I got this opportunity so, on. I'm gonna, Adam, I'm going to let you finish. Run through every little thing. That you, okay, that's a lot. Run down <laughs> the couple things that you don't like, And then leave us some good things that you liked about. All right, and then I'll, I'm I'll gonna, say this last I'll one. I'll say this last and one. And then I'll go with mine, and then Cody will defend his hope of why this is the second best Star Wars film. Okay, okay. okay so... Yeah. Obviously, yeah. obviously, Captain Phasma. I'll I'll say Captain Phasma again. Gets her ass kicked by Finn in one fight. That is pretty ridiculous. Especially you have you have all this marketing from the Force Awakens. Like obviously, like I went out, and got my shirt. I, I went out and my wife searched for the 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 black edition of Captain Phasma on her Same. collectible toys. Same. Like that one's so hard to find. Uh, Gwyneth Christie is one of my favorite actresses, obviously from Game of Thrones. Yeah, and 100%. completely wasted on all this marketing for her. It's like basically, I wish they would have done that for Jar Jar Binks because they marketed the crap out of him too. Uh, Kill him uh, off right in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then another one too. The biggest miss opportunity for me was Del Toro. I think Del Toro for me. Yep. The, the whole miss, like he should, he should not have been the guy that they got. They here's a guy, you know. He has a lapel pin. Okay, cool. So Justin he Thoreau. basically, so yeah, he, ha he has this 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 uh, lapel pin, which he looks completely like he uh, Han Harrison Ford in Temple of Doom, which is pretty cool looking. Uh, that guy should not have been him. It should have been Lando Calrissian. That's I'm the guy. Sure with you on that. And if you that actually, um, Ryan Johnson actually brought that up that they actually wanted. He actually originally had Lando in the script. Why? He said he took it away because he wanted to portray the war aspect and how no one, you don't really know who's the villain, who's not. I get that aspect, but for me, why? I I would have rather seen Lando than, D D don't get me wrong, I, I love seeing Del Toro, but Del Toro's character was kind of boring. And originally, did you guys know that Del Toro was originally supposed to play a Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace? And he dropped out because he had a uh, contract issues with um, a certain other film that he had to go do. So I remember building up. I was like, oh, are they going to make him like a Knights of Ren or something like that would be cool. But no, he's just this shitty smuggler who sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK, so Adam, if any, and if any way we can get Dash Rendar in that part, that would have been there. Anyway. You would have freaked <laughs> out about go. that. Event. Imagine how honestly, if it was Dash Rendar, you probably would have been even more happy. It probably been my favorite Star Wars film. So what uh, if, he, so what if he wasn't a redhead though? Would that be a problem? What was that? What if, if it he wasn't, does, a wasn't a redhead? Yeah. Oh, he better have that beard. He better have a full goatee. He better have some red hair. Oh man, I'll be, I'll be uh, so, typecasting. No, anyway. On this last aspect, Adam, what do you like about the film? Just a couple okay. things. After rewatching, I enjoyed the porks, which is I, I, I was that that was something. <laughs> They're I, great. I, they're, they do add some comedic moments to it. I think visually, it's really beautiful. 
Yeah. I love the salt, the salt planet. I can't remember the planet right now, but that was really visually in, really interesting. I enjoy Kylo Ren's character. I Best like villain in a Star Wars film. I really like Kylo Ren. I enjoyed the balls they did to kill off Snoke, which I was not expecting it, but it makes Kylo Ren an even better villain now. So seeing going forward. I also enjoyed the credits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you like Yoda? Uh, Yoda, yeah, he looked like he took a step backward in the, <laughs> no, I, having Yoda appear, I actually kind of thought that Yoda was going to appear, Dang. but that was kind of interesting, but why wasn't he a force ghost the whole time? It looked like he like reformed into like his puppet. He wasn't like blue the whole time. It, that's he what it looked like to me. He was a force ghost though. Huh? I don't he care wasn't. if he didn't look like it. He was a force ghost. I know, I know. I don't know. Okay, I'll say this. Okay. There was there's stuff to like about it, but it's just it's one of those no, okay, ones that's okay. so controversial. It's like I have more negatives than positives, yeah. even though I can still watch it and enjoy the ride. It's still stuff that bothers me for sure. Anyway, no, and that I'll and that stop. makes sense. So I'll go now. And then Cody, you are gonna debate us. Okay. And maybe we'll have to do a separate podcast of debating the last Jedi. We'll have two people versus two people. So who's going, going from here? My side? I don't know, Ryan. <laughs> I think oh, like no, Lee, Lee McCoy. Lee McCoy. I took a second. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Lee McCoy loved it too. So, all right. So, going for Star Wars The Last Jedi, I walk in and I, I walked out of the theater. And I remember I wasn't huffing or puffing, but I wasn't like enjoying myself. You know, like I was liking it, but I wasn't like enjoying it. And there were certain things in the theater that bothered me. I walk out of the theater and um, all my friends are like, oh my, like my friend who. He literally is the hardest person to police. His favorite film of this year is Red Sparrow. I have no idea how, but it's impossible to please this guy. He hated Force Awakens. He hates the prequels. He hates everything almost. He literally is the hardest person to please. Hated Rogue One. Just hardest person to please. Comes out, he's like, dude, I loved it. I'm like, oh, I, th I thought it was just fine. And we debated a bit, and he kind of changed my opinion before I did my review. I did my review. And I mean, if you go back and watch my review, I'm kind of like, just like, what the fuck did I just watch? Like, this isn't anything I wanted. None of my theories came true. And maybe that's, I appreciate the balls that they had to go in this direction, but I was very weirded out about it. So going off like Leia, I didn't like the, what they did. Holdo holding back the information never makes sense for me. Cantobite just needs to be thrown off a cliff. That planet just needs to go away. Even though I do like the Joseph Gordon-Levitt cameo, if you don't know which one it is, look it up. Um, yeah, Cantabite pissed me off. I would have Lando should have been in it. I love what they did with Luke's character. I love the with Ray. I didn't like him throwing the lightsaber over. I absolutely loved though Kylo Ren, and I will go as far as to say he's the best villain in a Star Wars franchise. In the Star Wars franchise, I'll even go as far as to say he is a better developed character than Darth Vader was. And the emotional arc that they have going with this character, especially after him killing Snow, because that was the biggest jaw-dropping moment when they killed Snow. I was like, oh, he's not going to die. He's not going to... Oh, oh, God. He, he really did die. And I'll even go so far as to say that action sequence with the Praetorian guards was awesome. It's just great. The choreograph in there is beautiful. The imagery in here is great. The score is fantastic. Ryan Johnson... He directed this film very well. I look at this film as that a, a well-made film, I'd give this film like an A minus, a B plus. As an enjoyable film, a C minus. It's not a rewatchable film. It's hard to rewatch. It's a slow moving film. And I, like I said, I do appreciate a lot of the things. I appreciate how they took it a day after. I do get the toxicness of people not liking this film, but for people to call out people because it's abysmal, you have not seen the fucking prequels then. Because the prequels are way worse than these films. Given you could probably rewatch Revenge of the Sith more than you could probably watch The Last Jedi, but still, it has good dialogue. It has good things. Some of the humor is hit or miss, but The Last Jedi for me is a film that the things that work very well for it work 100%, especially Porks. Give me a Pork solo film. Mm -hmm. Oh, can I Oh, yeah, go ahead. Solo film. Um, the character of Rose saving Finn at the very end, and then right when they kiss for some reason, that was the most awkward see, thing ever. You see the yep, blast doors behind them get blown up, where all the leadership of this resistance force is behind. 
Rose. I, that's another part. I was like, this movie is going to save itself if they actually kill Finn off right here. Yes. I was so, I, I was I was like, so happy Finn, about that. I, I like I like John Boyega. I think he's great. But I was like, this is going to be awesome if they do. And then all of a sudden it's like, why? It's like if we saved the died, ones we love. Bite, it would have made Canto Bite better. It, I think it would have fit the whole storyline they were showing in Canto Bite. You know what I mean? I, I felt like that that's what they were building up for the whole film, and then they just save him. And dear God, the, their kiss was more on chemistry. And I love the, char the character of Rose. I like the actress that portrays her. This doesn't go against her. It's just the chemistry between them was worse than Hayden Christensen and Natalie Portman. And that's being honest. So I'm done ranting. Again, there's things I like about The Last Jedi, and there's things I don't. It's definitely fallen down for me because I think when I came out, I was really just appreciating how ballsy it was. So, Cody, go ahead. I'm going to sit back, relax, and me and Adam will start yelling at you if we disagree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong, Cody. That's I'm Evolution, you are saying... out. The evolution is kicking you out. I'm wrong by saying here's the thing. Okay. First of all, <laughs> that's a misstep. Second of all, <laughs> you're wrong by one goddamn percent. <laughs> <laughs> okay so firstly i do have my problems with the last jedi i don't think it's a perfect movie the canto bite stuff the second act of the film i do have a problem with the story structure i feel look all of my problems with the film resolve in the second act of the movie. The third act and first act, the reason why I like it just under Empire Strikes Back is because of what the first and second act brought. Canto Bite, yes, the chemistry between Finn and Rose, Benicio Del Toro, all of that stuff is a abysmal but you know i i hate it just about as much as everybody else does i mean it's the most boring part of the film it does feel like we took a step back and went back to the prequels it really does but the first act getting ray set up with luke getting so getting like throwing the lightsaber over him look there when i first saw it into the movie theater i hated it but when it came down to it where my logic resides in this, I think to myself, you know, Luke's in the darkest place in his life. That <laughs> if you guys can't see, Zach is putting a, a pop figurine of Luke right in front of my face. But here's the thing. This is what I say. Initially, I hated it. I did. But the more I thought about it, the way I see it is Luke is in the darkest part of his life right now. You know, he's pretty much completely forgotten all about the Force, essentially. He's hidden himself away because he wants to die alone with no relations to anybody. So any familial ties that he may have... Great. Thanks. Thanks, Adam. That's that's exactly what I need to see when I'm defending myself. <laughs> <laughs> the way I see it, he he put aside any familial ties, especially what happened after with Kylo Ren. And so to me, when he threw the lightsaber over fast. his shoulder, he was trying to forget any amount of his past that he had before because he was just in such a dark place in his life that he didn't want to go back to his past. The, pre the presence of his lightsaber to me was a representation of everything that had been presented to Luke before, and he didn't want any part of that anymore. And the presentation of the lightsaber means that they want him to come back into the fray, to the war, to help the rebellion out, and he doesn't want any part of that either. So him taking the lightsaber and chucking it in my opinion, is Luke's stance on all of this stuff, how he feels about his past, how he feels about the rebellion, how he feels about everything. Him chucking that along with everybody's theories, in my opinion, is a representation of that. All right, guys, what else you got for me? You're wrong. No, you know what, though? I, I, fine, I guess I can look at the lightsaber going over like that. It just... The way it portrayed is like you waited two years and it's just. Come on. I waited two years for that. Again, I, I totally get your sentiments about The Last Jedi. There are people who love it, hate it, and think it's dog shit. That, that's how it goes. And you're yeah. just kind of in the middle. I think that's where me and Adam are. We're just in the middle. You know, here's the thing. The, 
The second act of The Last Jedi, it bothered me. It bothers most everybody. And that's one of the biggest reasons why people hate it is because of stuff that happens within that second act. But the so, third act, everything that happens on that salt planet, the, the cinematography of this film, the performances, the emotional bond that we get to see at the very end between Luke and Leia is one of the things that made this film for me. Because I it's a love the dice. I love how they showed the dice because that, that goes... There's a lot of good elements with Luke and when he with Chewbacca and when he goes on the Millennium Falcon for the first time. Like there's great sentiments to that. I want to pose something to you guys. Did you guys like the fact that they did not have actually Luke there and going Luke Skywalker motherfucker or do you like what they did with this character at the end? That's another issue too. It's again I I understand that that's a force ability in the books, but it, as a casual movie going audience, my wife would never know that, that that is actually a force power. Like I knew that's a force power, but that was never established that that's something that you could project yourself onto another planet or anything. Cause my thinking is if he projected himself onto that planet, handed Leia the dice, wouldn't the dice disappear or go through her hand or something like that? Cause it was not like something that it's actually there. You're you know, making he, me they, the film more. You know what? Here, here's the thing. I here's the thing. You can say that, but I don't know if that's a valid argument because I have people in my own personal life, my parents, my brother, sister, everybody, cousins. They all saw the film, and none of them are like me, where they've read the books or done this extra canon stuff to where they know that stuff is a force power. They saw that in the film, they loved it, even though they even though they've never read any of the extracurricular canon. They saw it, they loved it, and they thought it was symbolic because not only did Luke get what he wanted to die, but Luke was sacrificing him. I mean, it, in my mind, again, this is my mind, we all know that Luke is the most powerful Jedi. Except Dash Rendar. Sorry, he's not a Jedi, but... I think... I think Luke was trying to do the Obi-Wan thing to where he knew that even if he went there, even if he went there to provide the rebellion a chance to escape, he would be using the last of the amount of energy that he had within his system. So what he could do is either go there himself or he could use what's left of his force power to provide them a chance to escape, create the necessary goodbyes and bonds with the people around him that he needs to, and then stand off against Kylo Ren and haunt him in the worst way that he possibly can. See, you make good arguments, and I, I will not discredit to you. And some fucking trash ball comments on this podcast and discredit to you, they can go fuck themselves. Sorry. <laughs> but that's where I'm going to leave it at. I'm going to cut it off for last Jedi discussion because this will be another two hour discussion if we keep arguing about this. So everyone gets our thoughts. Now, the reason we keep we're doing this podcast, and again, God, we're gonna have to do another Star Wars podcast because there's so much Star Wars stuff to talk about. The thing I want to go into before we kind of finish up this podcast is two things. I want to talk about Rogue One, of course, because that is the first anthology film that does not partake to the episodic films. And then I want to talk about leading in the Han Solo, what your guys' thoughts are. Are you guys excited for it? Are you guys not? Um, what are you most excited for for the film? And just in general, what's another anthology film that you guys want from this? So let's start with Rogue One. Um, Cody, since you started arguing with Last Jedi, are you do you like Rogue One? Yes, I do. I think Rogue One is a good Star Wars film. What I will say about Rogue One, though, is that the first act is incredibly dragging and it's incredibly slow. Yeah. The first act for me, I thought we got good setup with gate it with um uh, uh, oh gosh, what's her name? Um, gosh, Gale Jin Erso. Jin Erso. Yeah. I thought we got good setup with her and with Cassian Endor and with the other character. Well, Cassian Endor and, and K2SO and Jin Erso specifically. And I liked I liked when uh, Cassian and and Jin were in the town on Jeddah. I thought that was all a good part. But the stuff with Saw Gerrera and the whole pacing oh. of the first act, it was so slow and it bother it makes me almost want to skip to the second act when when I'm watching it because it's just so boring and so slow. But the second act of the movie, when it transitions to an all-out war film and all out battle, and, and you know, just that second fit and that scene. That that scene with Darth Vader. 
just everything that happened I like in the second that. I mean, every second that is in the second act, I personally love, and I feel the film is at its best. And of course, I got to give some credit to Krennic, to Ben Mendelsohn. He was a great villain as, as Krennic. And I don't, you know, a lot of people are split on this, but when it comes to Governor Tarkin, I understand that the CGI isn't the best that it could be, but I do think that they did a pretty darn good job on it. And the guy who performs as him, he did a fantastic job. I will argue that the CGI is really good because most people that I know who aren't into film or Star Wars, um, when I took my grandma to see that film, uh, when I told her afterwards that he was dead, she was like, seriously? I was. She's like, I couldn't even tell. Most people can't even tell. So I, I think they did way better than other people are thinking. Given I, I can watch it and I'm be like, oh, okay, that, 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 that's fake. He's dead in real life. But yeah. <laughs> but what about you, Adam? What are your things about Rogue One? Well, my... First thing is, is that I think it's, it's sadly, I think it's one of the most overrated films of the last decade. Like yeah, for me personally, I think yeah, what you, what you want to do, what you want to do at most any movies, you want to have something that you're good. You leave the audience with talking about. And I think the third act of this film is absolutely fantastic. And it did exactly the job that Disney or whoever, wanted this film to do it sets up perfectly for a new hope and everything it gives you a very memorable scene one of probably the best star wars moments of all time heck my star wars month that actually made my top five star wars moments with i did that video with john from the real talk and um that darth vader shout sequence. out to john yeah exactly um so that sequence is fantastic the whole thing on the planet i loved uh i've been Mendelssohn's character i wish he would have been developed a little bit more but the other than the third act, that's like the, my favorite part of the movie. Like that's my my favorite part of it, and um, everything else is kind of it's not as memorable to me. And I feel like it's very disjointed. It's yeah, it's not something that I want to rewatch. If I want to watch Rogue One, I want to skip forward to that third act because that's the scenes I want to see. Yeah. You know, that's, I yeah, I enjoy it a lot, and I I can't like. You guys are like I don't know the other characters' names. Like I, I can, I, I know badass with a stick. Yeah, like Donnie. I, I know Donnie oh, Yin. K T S O. K T S O is one of my favorite characters too. Uh, he made my honorable mentions for my, uh, you know, side secondary characters. But everybody else, it's like it's not sticks out to me. And because I, I, I didn't think they were actually going to kill everybody off. But it's like you have to. You have you don't have time to develop these characters for make me no. necessarily care about them. So unfortunately, like I don't really know their names as, as much. I still enjoy that third act, and heck, even Jared Buckendale, shout out to you for giving a Rogue One review on almost sideways. Said he did a great job. He he likes the movie too, but he also knows that there's stuff not it's not perfect, you know. So yeah, yeah. there isn't there isn't there is issues with the film, and for me, I'm the same way with you. I I think it's overrated. Um. I know Griffin from Men vs. Movies is his second favorite Star Wars film, which I can understand. It's just the film does not work for me, and I wish it did. Yeah, yeah no. I, even walking out of it, I it's still a very well good film. Like, it's mm. not a bad film. Like, I'd still give it a pretty good rating, but everyone calls it one of the best Star Wars films, and I don't. No. I, I, that, I don't at all, and that's why I find it overrated is when people say, oh, this is my favorite Star Wars film. And it's overrated in that aspect. I don't think it's that good. It, they portrayed it in the trailers that this is me as dark, gritty film, this dark, gritty war film, and you don't really even get that. Like, I, I, when people see Han Solo, there's actually a sequence in there that is the most is grittier than anything in Rogue One. And that's saying a lot because you would expect that to be more lighthearted. And it, and then there's one war scene that the way it's shot, it's like, this is like incredible. So Rogue One, I do like the anthology series. I love what they're doing with it and all. I just, I, I just really wish they would go to different parts of the universe. And I think yeah. that's where we get to Han Solo. Did we need the film? No, no. I, I even no. after seeing it, I'll say, did it, did it make me see why we need they made it? Yeah, one to make money, and two they they added some different layers, not to Han Solo, but to the world. There's some anthology films that I think if Disney does it right, they can make some really good anthology films that Han Solo developed into this world because it does open some corner pockets for like the crime syndicate and stuff world that I hope they do actually go into, but. 
who knows they will who god knows they will they're talking about a land of calarisian solo film which donald glover's great in it but i want to get your guys perspective on this since i have seen han solo i want to talk about your guys adam you're our guest are you excited for han solo are you not i mean this was the first star wars film i walked into i'm like i'm not really excited for a, han a star wars film for once yeah i'm not really like looking i'm only looking forward to seeing donald glover as lando <laughs> <laughs> i think a lot uh, of people are and uh because even though he hasn't really said much in the trailers like that that guy him just smiling with that yellow uh his yellow outfit was looks fantastic uh uh that's what i'm looking forward to i'm hopefully hopefully they bring in something about the dice that would be kind of a good callback to last jedi that would be interesting um again with star wars movies i feel like they work better when you do not know any of the main actors faces i'll give you a pass on donald glover i I enjoy all the Aiden Rank in movies like Hail Caesar. And he's really good. Creatures. He's a really good actor. Beautiful creatures. I think he's a good actor. So I don't mind him cast it as Han Solo. I do have problems with you casting Woody Harrelson and Amelia Clark. These are two people that are very popular and have very strong fan bases. So when I see Woody Harrelson in the trailer for the movie, I only see Woody Harrelson. No, I get that. And um, for me, the thing is, even after seeing the film, um, Woody Harrelson, for me, um, he's the one that's still the most recognizable, if that makes sense. Uh, what about you, Cody? Like, are you like, do, does that bother you at all? Honestly, yeah, it kind of does. I enjoy Woody Harrelson. I do. He's one of my favorite actors. And honestly, whatever he touches turns to gold, in my opinion. But He's great. You know, the, the thing that I was most nervous about going into Han Solo, you know, Donald Glover, great. I'm super excited to see him. The thing that I was really most nervous about was Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo. And, and I'll say this, he um the trailers do not do the guy justice. Um after seeing the film, I, I don't know if I'll be the, in the minority of this. He just fades into the role. He he I didn't see Alden. I saw a young Han Solo. And that's something that's good to know. Um, I know that was my biggest worries. Han Solo's my top three favorite Star Wars characters. So the fact that Alden can just fade into it, he doesn't he's never gonna be like Harrison Ford, but he fades into it very nicely. Donald Glover fades into Lando. Like you close your eyes, it, it sounds like fucking the original Lando, Billy. And um, in going more and more to Adams, you know, you do mention Amelia Clark. I'm trying to think. I don't. When I watched the film, I was like, "Oh, it's Amelia Clark. It's Khaleesi." And even in my review, I could not remember the girl's name. I just kept saying Khaleesi. Um, I do. Her character of Kira is very well done. Um, I she does fade in well, but Woody Harrelson is the one actor that I was like, "Yeah, that's Woody Harrelson. It's not Tobias." So, but Adam this, saying, this, "Yeah." See, the thing is, like, going with the Amelia Clark, she hasn't transitioned into acting on the big screen yet. She's very popular in Game of Thrones, obviously. But m the most recent thing where that that kind of your you see the actor on screen and you immediately get drawn out of the, the movie, Avengers Infinity War. Uh, Peter Dinklage is in it. And everybody yeah. who saw the movie, I was around. I knew he was in it. But everybody was like, "Whoa, it's it's this guy," and they knew it. They get everybody. Like I feel like that. Like they got sucked out of it a little bit when they saw Dinklage on the screen. I agree. And yeah. Like, but when I watched like three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri, that didn't happen there. But because it was such a drawing, it's a different kind of genre type of film. It, it does to kind of that that disconnect a little bit. So that's what I'm. A, a, I don't think Amelia Clark's necessarily going to do it because she looks completely different than she does from Sarah Connor or from Khaleesi or anything like that. You know, she looks a little different with her. Like her, I saw a picture of her in Target, and it looks it looks like her, but it looks different at the same time. So I don't think yeah. I want to have that disconnect with her. But Woody Harrelson for sure, because all I see is like him from Hunger Games, him from you know the, all these different other films and franchises that he's in. You know, because it doesn't look it looks like Woody Harrelson. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So no, I get that sentiment too. I mean, I think you raise a lot of what people are thinking about Han Solo. Now, Cody, what do you think about Han Solo? Are you excited for it? Yeah, uh, well, I'm kind of in the middle on it. I think we are I, all kind of like when they announced it, you're we're like you're really making a solo film. I mean, what <laughs> one thing that I well, there's really, a bunch of really, issues with the behind the scenes too. So one, I'll tell you the thing that I 
I hate the fact that all the mess and all that stuff happened behind the scenes. And like I said, the thing that I'm most nervous about, I there are two things. I'm nervous about the the Han and Chewie meeting thing because that's a very, very integral part of Han Solo. And then, mm -hmm. like I said, the Alden Ehrenreich thing, I'm nervous about him. But on a more technical level, because if you guys know anything about my channel, I like after effects and all this kind of stuff i really really hope that they fix the uh i'm if they keep the title cards that they've been putting in the trailers i, I i'm going to hate it because those title cards that we've seen in the trailers anyone can go on either imovie or adobe premiere pro and create those themselves well maybe not premiere pro but you get it no i get that and again i think you guys all have the same sentiment of han solo why did we need this film again i know after seeing the film I, I i can see why they made it because i enjoyed it it is a fun time at the movies it's easily the most accessible star wars film i think for any fans like even for people who aren't fans i took a friend who isn't really the biggest diehard star wars fan and he came out and he's like i really enjoyed it he's like i liked it more than last jedi fair enough it's a good made film Everyone really fades into the characters. Uh, Woody Harrelson's the one that sticks out. Still a good performance. Action sequences are good. Score is good. I mean, it's what you think would be good in this Han Solo film. It's not garbage. It, for me, it's just a good film. It's fun. And it made me understand why we got it. The dice, you'll see. And I will say, there's some nice things where you're like, oh, yeah, like that, that ties into that. And oh, that ties into that. Oh, I get that. Like you get those nods that you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. It, and sometimes it kind of plays out. You're like, okay, like I, I don't need that many things. But the thing I think this film does great is it opens up corner pockets for different anthology films to come down the line. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe I'm not. But the, I think this film sets up some anthology films that I'm like, I need now. So I'm hoping that's what they do with it. But I think that's a great place to end this podcast, guys, for the Star Wars talk. Again, there's so much stuff. We didn't get to talk about Star Wars Rebels, really. We didn't get to talk about the cartoons, the video games, any of that, really. And we're going to just have to do it again because there's so much to talk about Star Wars. So, you know, there's always Star Wars stuff yeah. coming up. So we'll just maybe. have to do it again. I mean, maybe we'll talk about more than just the movies. Next time, maybe we'll talk about the books, the TV shows, the video yeah. games. Yeah, you're all right on there. But before we get going, I do want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, I want to give another big shout out to Adam. So, Adam, I want you to let them know where they can find you at. And, of course, like how big of a Star Wars fan you are. Well, guys, I love Star Wars. It's a great franchise. No, <laughs> I absolutely love uh, Star Wars so much, guys. It's really an honor to be here. Hopefully, one day we get a Dash Rindar, Mara Jade film. It'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, anyway, check me out here on YouTube at Almost Sideways. I'm on Letterboxd at Almost Sideways. Twitter, Adam Sideways. Bunch of social media stuff, guys. I would love to have a conversation with you guys. Yeah, thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Looking forward to talking more Star Wars with you guys later. No problem, Adam. Of course, thank you for having us. Guys, seriously, she did. he did a whole Star Wars month in December. Go check out. I'm pretty sure you probably have a playlist on your YouTube channel. Yeah, it's Star Wars videos, yeah. Go check it out. That was such a great thing. And um, I, you did the, you did you upload the short film, right? I the, uploaded my I uploaded my uh, review of my short film. I showed yeah, a lot of okay. footage of it. I can't really show it because I used like like living cut like actual songs in it. So I don't I'll get like a huge okay. bunch of copyrights. <laughs> Yeah, no, it makes sense. I might, make a, I might make a copy of it to you for you guys and send it to your way one day. So I'd love to I'd see love it. I love to see it. You, yeah. guys, you guys gotta go check it out. He does a lot of great things. He does his own, like giving his um you pitched a pretty much Star Wars film, which I love. That's one of your best videos over there. So make sure you guys go check it out. Go hit up his subscribe button. And even if you're listening to this on audio, fuck it. Go go still do it. It's it's <laughs> go, make a YouTube account. It's not that hard. But of course, before we get going, we are also my other host on here, Cody. Tell them where they can find you at. All right, guys, as always, with everything we do, you guys can find me on YouTube at Cody Curtis. Search it up. It'll be the first name you find. You can also find me on here doing the Sweet Film Podcast and whatever other projects that Zach and I decide that we want to bring to you guys. But other than that, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at underscore Cody underscore Curtis. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Thank you so much for listening listening not missing don't even know what that was thank you so much for listening you guys all rock you're a bunch of rock stars and we love having you 
Oh, yes, we do love you. Now, guys, of course, thank you guys, of course. Make sure to hit that subscribe and like button if you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure to rate us on iTunes or SoundCloud or wherever the fuck you're watching us because that's the best part about this. Make sure to comment down below and tell us what your favorite Star Wars film is, how excited you are for Han Solo. What is? Do you want Dash Rendar to be a Star Wars character? What is a character you want to be canon? Bunch of conversations that you guys are going to be able to talk about down below. So, of course, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope to talk with you guys soon again. And make sure to look out for another sweet film podcast soon. I think, Cody, our next one is about Pixar, right? I believe so. Yep. So look out for that Pixar discussion, guys. Of course, you guys are seriously all the best. So, of course, remember to stay classy and have a sweet day. <laughs>